Hey guys, Steve from PC Budget Solutions and it's done. My new personal rig. The old rig with all the overclocked Ryzen 7 GTX 1080 that I spent all kinds of money on that I don't need. Not using it anymore. I'm using a budget solution. <laughs> See what I did there. So, thousand dollar gaming rig done. Let's pan over and take a look at it here. There she is. I've done a couple unboxing videos and everything of some of the parts. But, I took it one step further. You guys love seeing budget rigs, that's fine, but you guys asked me a couple questions. Ryzen overclocked. I did a video on that, both at 1440p and 1080p. Now, though, a little different. You guys wanted to see RAM overclocking on, on Ryzen. So, I have three RAM speeds 2133, which you guys can already know what to expect, 2400, and 2666. Fastest I can get the system goes 2666. So, I'm bringing to you guys that today, okay? So the system I'm using is a $1,000 computer. Yeah, I can use a GTX 1080. I'm trying to keep the bottlenecks down by running just high settings, but I'm gonna give you guys a realistic expectation on what RAM speed does, because while you're not gonna fork over another $300 for a 1080, you may fork over another $20 if RAM speed helps. So I don't know the answer to that yet. I'm still benchmarking, so if I don't know, I don't think you guys know yet, so let's find out if RAM speed really helps Ryzen game any better. So I'm using my actual test bench, my personal ring, which is Ryzen 5 1600 3.9 gigahertz. You can see the settings I used. You can see I'm using a Corsair H100i RX 580. And then you can see my memory and the timings. I use basically CL16 at 2666, 2400, and 2133. Now, a couple things to note. First things first, is my usual test bench. I'm running CPU-Z, GPU-Z, HW monitor, MSI afterburner, and Chrome with about five Chrome tabs open, including YouTube, not playing in the background, just open. That's my usual test bench. Second of all, I ran both 1080p and 1440p. However, I pretty much did high settings across the board. I wanted to reduce the GPU bottleneck. There was still a little bit in some games, but I wanted to see if we could eliminate it. So. That's my testing methodology. Let's take a look and see what the results were. First up on the chopping block, Rise of the Tomb Raider. When I did 1440p, you definitely started to see a GPU bottleneck. But 1080p, you can see steady gains. You're looking at anywhere from 2 to 3% for each bump with about a 5 to 7% delta just going from 2133 to 2600. And at this frame rate, 6 seven, eight frame rates is definitely gonna make a huge difference. So, in the first test, I would go to say, especially on Ryzen, faster memory helps. Now, let's take a look at Ghost Recon Wildlands and see what we have going on over there. It's clear that Ghost Recon Wildlands did not like the slower memory. My first two tests at 2666 and 2400, I only ran twice. But the 2133, I ran five times. And I got the same results. At 1440p, where a bottleneck normally would exist, and it did, it didn't do well. At 1080p, you can see even the 2133 dropping off. So it's clear that even when there's a present of a GPU bottleneck, the RAM speed still has a bit of a factor. You know, we're talking right around 15 to 20% decrease in frame rates at 1440p, but at 1080p, we only maybe gained about five, six, seven percent. So nothing huge here, but keep these results in the back of your mind. Let's continue. I'll be honest, <laughs> For Honor did not care at all. No care whatsoever. So much so that I'm not even 100% sure that these benchmarks are in the right order. I ran it a couple times. I just took honestly the first test that I got because they were all so close. For Honor, doesn't matter at all. Ram speed, do what you want. But l l let's just keep it going now. We'll chalk this up to as a pass. Let's talk about GTA 5 for a minute. I generally don't run GTA 5 because there is no default settings. What I did was I restored settings to default, what it recommended based off my system, and then I just changed the resolution. So that's what I did. It was mostly like a high level settings. At 1080p, the memory didn't make a huge difference, 3 to 4% from top to bottom. Similar story with 1440p, but it still increased performance. 
I've read a bit that GTA 5 really loves even faster memory, so I would like to do this test with 3000 or 3200 megahertz down the road as memory support gets better on Ryzen, but this still continues to trend. It does scale with memory speed, so let's keep going. I'm starting not to like Ashes of the Singularity just because I've had a 2 or 3% performance delta just running the same benchmark, same set of multiple times. But I ran it a couple times each and kind of averaged them together. And what's really weird is that for, at 1080p, where there should be the least amount of bottleneck, there was like no performance gain going from 2133 to 2400. But up to 2600, you saw a 5% increase. And then at 1440p, you saw steady increases a 4 and then a 2 FPS jump, which at, at this level, we're talking uh, an 8% and a 4% delta increase. So didn't surprise me with this being a CPU bound test. I just kind of expected more gains at 1080p with less GPU bottleneck. Maybe memory speed and GPU might have a lot more common than I first thought going into this. But let's take a look at the overall results. Let's average the delta percentages over 2133 across all these tests and let's see what our results are. So let me explain this graph. This is how this worked. 2133 was my baseline for each test, the performance results. I took the 2400 and the 2600 and divided it by the 2133 results. So I got a percentage anywhere from like 102 to 115, okay? I did that for each game. And then I averaged up 1440p and 1080p for each set of results. And that's where I got my delta. So at 1440p, at 2600 megahertz, we saw an 8% increase and 5% to 2400 megahertz. But what's interesting now is at 1080p, when there's less of a GPU bottleneck, the delta was less. So this is something that maybe one of you guys might want to research. I ran these tests multiple times. Why, when there's a GPU bottleneck present, does RAM speed help? Does RAM speed help with the GPU bottleneck? I don't know. So, this is interesting. I think there needs to be more research in this, but um, let's take a look at my final thoughts here. So, my final thoughts. I think we need to A, look into the architecture of Ryzen a little closer. Somebody who's a little bit more of a professional with architecture design than myself. I know a fair bit, but nothing at like the electronics level per se. So that's the first thing we do. Second thing we do is wait. What I mean by that is the testing we're doing, we're all kind of getting all scattered results. I know my results are not going to match everybody else's. So what I mean by wait is we have to wait for better support from AMD, better support from the motherboard manufacturers and stuff like that. Once all that's there and we've done a little bit more research on how the Ryzen architecture actually works, then we might be able to figure out if the results are still a little bit unexpected like mine, why? So that's what I'm gonna take from this. So this is a thousand dollar computer over here. It's a great computer. It's my personal rig. I'm gonna use it for a while. 1440p and 1080p. I love it. I really like it a lot. It's a great budget solution. <laughs> See what I did there. So hopefully you guys liked it. I finally brought this video to you. So if you do Cram, destroy that like button. If you didn't, that's fine. Go ahead and dislike it. That'll let me know that, hey, I spent a lot of time on something you guys really didn't like. Definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. My entire rig, everything that I have in this rig that cost me about $1,000, is going to be in the links in the description below. You can buy it from Amazon. It helps me out a lot. But thank you guys so, so, so much for tuning in. This is Steve from PC Budget Solutions. I'll see you guys later on down the road.